Steve. Please don't. You know that feeling where you ask for something over and over again and then you actually get it and then you regret asking for it in the first place? No, okay, I don't actually know that feeling. Oh, it's just so funny because I have this friend who wanted to play the Boston Bruins and I kept telling him, Slay the Dragon! Hi! Leafs Nation! Dan Witness! Bronx and Lucas! Oh, oh, biblical! Austin Matthews is the lead! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully, mostly. Are oh, you in? Oh. Leafs lose 5-1 to the Boston Bruins in game one of their series. Game one! Just game one! Now, here's something I've struggled with on my channel for a long time. Talking about Leaf playoff wins. No. Doing videos about games the night of the game or the morning after. Now, if you do it the night of, you get it up quicker. Everyone's happier that way. Except they wouldn't have been, and wow, am I glad I slept on that one. I was mad last night. Real mad! But now I've had some time to think about it, got a little sleep, had my coffee, and I think I can talk about it like an adult now. Overall, I agree with what Mike Babcock said after the game. Boston dominated the opening 10 minutes. They got a power play and a goal out of it. The Leafs dominated the next 10 minutes, and they got a goal out of it. Leafs dominated the first 10 minutes of the second, and all oh, they almost got a goal out of it. They almost got a couple. Boston dominated the back 10 of the second, and they got two goals out of it. The third was a write-off. So when you look at it that way, I don't think the Leafs were four goals apart from Boston. This wasn't game one of Philly-Pittsburgh losing 7-0. Like, the Leafs were in this. So I'm encouraged heading into game two. Here's what's discouraging. One, they might be down their second best center, but we'll get to that later. Two, I expected progress. Like, even up to the point where it's 3-1, that was fine. I didn't mind that. I was heading into the third going, you know what? I think they'll be okay. They might even come back in this one. They have a good shot. Where the lack of progress comes in is how they just let the game get away from them completely. They let their emotions get the best of them. They took stupid penalties, and they just let Boston win. A team that you don't have to let win. If you slip up, they'll just take the win. Leafs lost their first game against Washington last year, but they did score first, and you saw Washington just, oh, they were so brittle. The Bruins Bruins aren't like that. On the broadcast, Jim Houston said this is the no surprise series. Both teams know what to expect. Both teams have thought they were going to play each other for months, and it's true. So the fact that there seem to be surprises is annoying. Let's go through it. First goal on the power play, Brad Marchand swoops in. Excellent speed, excellent backhand, excellent move, excellent celebration, even excellent goal. Except it wasn't. It was offside there, friend. Now initially they're looking at, I think it was Bergeron, whether or not he went offside. No, no. Right over there, look at the guy who scored the goal, and they didn't review it. So I don't know if it's someone in the back room for the Leafs, someone on the bench, I don't know who. Someone made a mistake, someone goofed up, and it cost the Leafs the first goal of the series. See if you're just salty, look. Here's the thing, here's the puck, here's the other player going over the blue line, it's called offside, you're not allowed to do that! Someone has to catch that! It's the playoffs, man, it's bad enough that the rules of playoff hockey, it literally isn't hockey. When you're missing key plays like this at key moments, in the game, you're competing against yourself. Brutal puts the Leafs behind the eight ball right away, one nothing Bruins. I don't know how you justify that, I'd be curious to know if you can. But if Brad Marchand goes offside, what do you expect him to do, call it? Marchand must have the worst time with airport metal detectors with that horseshoe. He's allowed to trip you, he's allowed to hook you and spear you, he's allowed to run your goalie, he's allowed to lick you on the face, and he's allowed to score offside goals. Brad Marchand is allowed to do whatever he wants. Stop waiting for justice to happen, it's been seven years. You think there's going to be some kind of awakening? Oh, Brad, you're not allowed to do all those shenanigans you've been doing forever. It's not going to happen. Brad Marchand is an elite hockey player, and one of the ways he gets his opponent off of their game is he makes them stop playing hockey. When the game is in play, handle business. After the whistle, ignore him. Sorry, this has turned into a completely different thing from the offside rant. But then late in the first, open puck, and Zach Hyman chugga 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 wins a foot race! Forehand! Backhand! You're jock! Zach freaking Hyman makes it 1-1 late in the first heading into first intermission. And that should have been all you needed just to pump some adrenaline in there. And it was. Leafs had a great end of the first period and they began the second great as well. Beginning of the second period, Hyman, that beast, draws the high sticking call from Chara, Leafs to the power play. And they come close! Ah, no avail. About seven minutes in, Denton Heinen slashing William Nylander. You can't do that. Leafs to the power play again. Mitch Warner's gonna so my least favorite thing to do after Leafs losses is watch the highlights before I make these videos. Out of all the highlights, the one that caused the most agony wasn't any one of the five Bruins goals. It was Marner's backhand miss. With Rask playing so well in this one and just having an amazing playoff track record, you gotta bury those. And all the momentum that the Leafs had, I think missing out on those two power play attempts ate away at them a little bit. Boston drew energy for it and they decided to fight back. And 14 minutes in, the Patrick Marner 
Carlo hooking call on Danton Heinen. Now it's hard to complain about the officiating in this game when at the time of this penalty being called, the Bruins had taken three penalties and the Leafs had taken two. But I just look at this Marlow hook and the JVR hook from the first period. Really? Playoff penalty calls, it's like driving through a mystery box in Mario Kart. You're just watching it spin, 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 and you're like, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna get. What are you in here for? Banana peel. And the Leafs had their opportunities, they almost scored, now Boston gets their power play, you know it's coming. Hainsey with the clearing attempt, but Boston with an excellent keep at the blue line, you gotta get that thing up! Krejci sends a cross crease for Bacchus, who just eats Ron Hainsey alive. There's just no fight there, and it's 2-1 Boston. And watching the replay, imagine the Nets over here and Krejci's over there. There, Hainsey standing in the crease guarding like this. What are you hoping for there? Score the goal yourself? Move somebody! Should've arrested him, should've arrested him, and now we head into the... No, we don't! Less than a minute left in the period. There's five Leaf defenders. They have numbers on the Bruins. There's only three attacking. Marshawn feeds Pasternak, but he stopped. Marshan goes and gets the rebound. Gee, I wonder what he's looking for. Hainsey and Placanitz both have Pasternak and both back off at the same time. I've been saying it all season. I said it all last season. I think I've been saying it for a long time but uh, I'll just go ahead and repeat myself since you clearly haven't heard me. TALK! I'm on my knees begging you! TALK TO EACH OTHER! The worst! The worst! The effing worst! Pasternak gets a, just a garbage shot that no one else scores but him, and it's 3-1 Boston. I don't know if that's Hainsey's guy or Placanitz's guy. I'm going to assume Placanitz. It probably gets solved if you just talk. Third period. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Pasternak, partial break, stopped by Freddy, who's sprawling. Glove save. He flips it right in the air. Riley just overskates it. Corrali bats it in, and it's 4-1 Boston. And now we get into a chicken versus egg thing. He's kneeing Freddy in the head. He's literally on top of him when he bats it in. And I was talking to someone like, well, did you think Freddy was going to make the save? The save on what, though? The shot that was made while the player was on top of him? Corrali's not on top of him. The shot doesn't happen. The goal doesn't happen. And because goaltender interference... Oh, we drove through another question box in Mario Kart. Brrr, you have no idea. How do you not at least review it? If you leave it up to chance and they decide it's a goal anyway, hey, Freddy's out of the crease, whatever, fine. Challenge the thing. Give it a look. I'd be so much more concerned about this series if the Bruins just looked like the overwhelming juggernaut over the Leafs. The Leafs looked dominant for at least 20 minutes of this game, maybe even half an hour, but they just at certain points seem determined to beat themselves. Now we gotta talk about the bad thing. Marner's getting double teamed, I think it was Dan O'Chara had him, and then Tommy Wingles comes in and hits him high, hits him in the face. You cannot do that. I'm sure one of his line mates, Patrick Marlowe, was gonna come, oh no, it's Nas. Red missed. Wingles is down on the ice, he's prone, and Nas just right into him. Nas says he was already in the middle of throwing his hit. I mean, I believe that, but he was still prone, and I think he saw it and had enough time to change his course. I know some Leaf fans aren't gonna love hearing it. You can't do that. The five in a game was justified. What I do not and cannot understand is how Wingles got nothing. That's not a head hit. That's not an elbowing. That's not something. I'm not trying to absolve Nas. This has nothing to do with Nas, as a matter of fact. It's two Bruins and Mitch. Really, it's one Bruin and Mitch. It's Wingles and Mitch. That's nothing. That's nothing. You're sure. That was terrible. So what's Nas gonna get? I saw a lot of people saying two games because Doughty got one for his. There's no way that's two games. First of all, here's how the NHL works. Kadri got five in a game. He got kicked out. That takes away at least a game right there. He might get one, which puts the Leafs in a really bad spot. I said it earlier with respect to the Leafs. I'll say it again with respect to Nas. I just want progress. It's great to play with emotion. He's one of the best players on the team. But in moments like that where stuff pops off, and it's the playoffs, it's gonna pop off. You gotta be in control. And he's just not, man. And it's bad. And something has to change in that regard if the Leafs are ever gonna win. And I mean, with that, the game's over. Krejci scores another bank shot, whatever, 5-1. I have more to say, but I'm gonna get to questions because I think a lot of what I have to say has to do with that. Oh yeah, also, no if I were you until the end of the series. Is there a way to delete the red miss from Kadri's vocabulary? I hope so, because he's gonna delete the Leafs' chances of winning if he doesn't stop. Even worse, delete someone's career. Are you in? Yes, I'm still in. Does Matt Martin make the lineup? Now, I saw a ton of this. I saw a ton of Martin should be in the lineup. Martin needs to be in the lineup. Here's my thing there. 
Martin needs to be in the lineup if you plan on losing game two. Because then, when you're losing 5-1 late in the third, you send him out there to do something awful to somebody. Which is messed up, and it's not the Leaf style at all. Andreas Janssen is the Leaf style. Tenacity, speed, skill. The Bruins will beat the Leafs if they get the Leafs to stop being the Leafs. They gotta be like Hyman on the only goal that they got. What do you honestly expect the conversation in the Bruins locker room to be like? Adam McQuaid just pipes up, hey boys, boys. Boys, that guy that I knocked out is in the lineup tonight. Uh-oh, we better stop being mean. Yes, Zdeno, I think that's absolutely right. What about you, Brad? Does anyone got any more cheese? Brad, for the love of- Or I like peanut butter too, I'll take peanut butter. I'm sick of the idea that the Leafs need a babysitter. I'm also sick of the Leafs needing a babysitter. At some point, you gotta stand up for yourself. These aren't the Bruins of over half a decade ago. They're not bullying teams into losing. They just play hockey harder than you do. Step up. If Kadri is suspended, who should replace him and how should the line Look, I guess we'll end on this one. It's a heck of a question. I don't know if Babcock would ever use these, but let's give it a shot. Cassidy was really hard matching the Bergeron line to Matthews. So I say Hyman, Matthews, Brown. They have experience together. They're really good defensively. Brown can chip in a few goals. Brown just, I, I feel like can't do much in his current role. He didn't have a single shot in game one. I'd like to see this given a shot in the first period anyway. Second line, Marlowe. Nylander, Marner, or you could go all speed on that line and a little bit of chemistry, Marlowe, Nylander, Kapanen. My other suggestion was JVR, Bozak, Kapanen, or you could reunite the JVR, Bozak, Marner line. And then if that's what you're going to do with your lineup, you could go Komarov, Plakanitz, Janssen, Komarov, Plakanitz, Martin, Komarov, Plakanitz, Moore, it doesn't really matter. Because Kadri is a key guy on the power play and the Leafs need their power play to work if they're going to have a shot against Boston, you would think Janssen would get back in the lineup because Babcock loves him there. All right, there, we're done. There's game one in the books. Oh my God, I need to calm down. Or maybe I need to get amped up, I don't know. The Leafs can beat Boston. We've seen them. They almost did it in this one. Don't let the score fool you. No series is won or lost in the first game. The Leafs are a great hockey team. Go out there and play great hockey. That is it for game one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that this one's not over. Game two, Saturday. Oh, and I should probably mention, I'm going to be there.